Well, hello, pre-calculus students and seekers of general, general truth. We continue our study of sinusoids here by looking at an application that involves waves in the ocean and a, a tsunami. So an earthquake occurs in the Atlantic Ocean at 9 a.m. and causes a tsunami. The size of the waves fluctuate between 10 and 60 feet every 30 minutes. So it's kind of like if you were watching this wave, it's, you know, you would be have a, a crest and a trough or a min and a max, right? And these waves would go something like this. And we can see that, you know, if you were storing, let's say you had like sea level here as your point of reference, the, the smallest, the trough of the wave here would be 10 feet. And then the absolute tallest part of the wave here, we call that the crest of the wave, that would be 60 feet. Okay. And then not only that, but it would take about 30 minutes to go from a crest to a wave, to a trough, a min to a max. So 30 minutes, you get a minimum. Another 30 minutes, you get a maximum. Another 30 minutes, you get a minimum. Okay. And we want to know, we want to write a function, w of t, that models the height of the waves in feet, where t represents the minute since 9 a.m. So 9 a.m. here is the point of reference. That's when t is equal to 0, okay? Because we want to know the minute since 9 a.m. Uh, if the waves reach the shoreline at noon, how high will they be? Assume that the waves start at its crest, at its highest point. So at its highest point, we want a maximum, right? This is saying that we want a maximum at 0, 60 because it started out so the time is zero at a maximum so the height of the wave is 60. And before we dive too deeply into all of the nitty-gritty details, let's just review very quickly that a sinusoid has this type of form, right? Um, it's some constant a times the sine function or the cosine function of b times t plus, um, and I'm going to say uh, k here, and then plus d, okay? And remember that these, these are all some variables here, and k here is the phase shift. Okay. d is the horizontal shift, b will help us with the horizontal shrink and stretch, and then a is the amplitude. So just a reminder that a is the amplitude, Right. Uh, the period is going to be 2 pi over b, and then k is the phase shift, and d is the vertical shift. Okay. And with that in mind, uh, and I'm going through this pretty quickly because I've already covered this in great detail in the previous lesson in those videos, so I'm just, this is the quick reminder. And what we're going to do here is we're going to extract all of this information from the, the problem and then write a sinusoid to meet the, this, this description. Well, we already know some of the, the information here. It has the, the waves have a minimum of, of 10 and a maximum of 60. So that tells us that the amplitude, 1 half max minus min. So this gives us an amplitude of 25. And the period here from the information in the problem is a little bit tricky because if it goes from min to max in a mere 30 minutes, so if, it, if you start out at a max and then you go down to the min, that's 30 minutes, that's only half a period. A full period means that it's got to go back to the maximum again. So the full period is actually from max to max, right? It's going to actually take you 60 minutes to do a full period or one hour. So the period here is actually 60. And I'm actually going to use the cosine function here in order to help me write, uh, con to construct the problem. So it's going to be W of t equals 25 cosine of. And remember that the period is 2 pi over b. We want the period to be 60. So this is 2 pi over, and this is the letter b here. And that means once I solve this out, I get that b is equal to 2 pi over 60, or that's pi over 30. So I get pi over 30 times t. 
and I'm going to leave some space here for some shifting up and down. Now I'm going to graph the intermediate steps here of just cosine of 25 cosine of pi over 30 times t. So it's going to look like this. It's going to have a max at 0, 025, right? But we want a max at 0, 060. So that means we have to shift everything up 35 units. And we don't need a phase shift in this case. It's actually very nice that we don't need a phase shift because uh, our maximum is occurring when time is equal to zero. All right, so with the magic of graphing utilities, you see that I've graphed this function here in a computer so you can see what, it, what exactly it looks like. You can see that um, initially you have a maximum of 0, 060, and then you, you have a minimum of 30, 10, and then a maximum that uh, again of uh, 60, 60, and then it's going to have a minimum, and then you can see kind of the, um, the middle points of the, of the waves here are, is occurring at 35. Okay, so we can see that this wave matches the description of everything that's in the problem. It, uh, it goes from 10 to 60 every 30 minutes, and then it starts out at a maximum. And now we can actually answer the question, how high will the waves be if, it, if the shoreline, um, if it takes until noon okay, for us to reach the shoreline? Well, noon right, is three hours after 9 a.m., But remember that T here is measured in minutes. Let's not forget that. T represents minutes. So three hours after 9 a.m. is 3 times 60, or that's 180 minutes. Okay. So we want to find the height of the wave at 180. So T of 180 or sorry, W of 180. So we just take 180 and plug it into this function right here. And we get the result that at noon when this, these waves reach the shore, the, the waves is going to be 60 feet high, okay? Which means you better run if there are some 60 foot waves coming your way to the shore, right? So, and you can also see that if you know if the waves change a little bit and they hit um, the, the the shoreline at some other time, maybe the waves are very small; they're only 10 feet. But if they're hitting the shore shoreline at noon in particular, then the waves is going to be 60 feet tall. So it's actually, it's definitely evacuation time for all the people on the beach. Um, so I want to. Um, just recap the big ideas here, right? What we want to do in these types of problems is extract a bunch of information. We want to turn it into a sinusoidal problem. Find the amplitude, find the period, find some other point, and then use what we already know about writing sinusoids to come up with a function for this. It's going to take a little bit of, th a lot of thinking, you know, some work, just being careful with all of the details. As always, continue to struggle and struggle well that's part of the natural learning process thank you for watching and have a wonderful day